Hi, I'm Marsh Brodeur, and this video is for Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Uh, even if your name is not Kathy, feel free to watch. Um, what we're going to be talking about today is Bobby McFerrin, and specifically, we're going to be breaking down his solo a cappella style, where he sounds like more than one person up there at the same time. It helps to be a genius like Bobby McFerrin, but <clears throat> there is a lot of technique going on there that we can observe and learn and uh, take some of that and make it our own for some of our own performances. Um, I know that I personally can watch a Bobby McFerrin performance 10 times, you know, on a video and each time I'll find something new, you know, wow, I never noticed he did that. Or, oh, that's how he does that. And it's great. He's been a great, um, a great teacher <clears throat> for me. And we also agree philosophically on how to learn and how to teach vocal improvisation to singers. Um, but that is a video for another day. So let's get down to specifics. Realistically, there are about five elements, if you will, that help to make up that uh, sound of, you know, keeping a bass going while a rhythm's going and then singing melody over the top of it as if the whole thing is, you know, just rolling right along and it's all being done by one person live. So let's talk about that. Now, uh, I think, well, well, let's start with a, an example. Um, Bobby does a uh, great little tune called Thinking About Your Body. I suspect he probably pulled it out of thin air one night, liked the way it worked out and incorporated it into his, you know, regular routine. Um, but in its simplic relative simplicity, there's a whole lot going on, and it does show that kind of classic uh, Bobby McFerrin feel of having a bass and a rhythm, and then a, and then a uh, uh, a melody and a lyric, um, you know, going on what appears to be all at the same time. So let's do a little of that. <laughs> before Bobby goes off into Bobby land with the, with the whole thing. So let's break down some stuff. Uh, we'll start with some of the most obvious. Um, Bobby uses an open hand on his chest to get a, to get more of a slap feel. And as well as the, uh, as that part, I, uh, prefer my hand to be, uh, balled into a fist to get even more of the um, because I really like that sound on the bass feel more than I do if I have to use consonants. Uh, because consonants by their nature are not pretty. You know, a consonant left to itself is a... <laughs> so, um, you know, there's nothing pretty about that. And it's something that can turn, that does turn some people off when they hear uh, people improvise music, jazz especially, and there's a whole lot of, you know, scooby dooby dooby pop it dooby 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 whatever, you know. Um, I try to avoid all of that because it sounds like a nonsensical language, first of all, which confuses the average human's brain. We're used to communicating with, you know, this, even when we're, singing, we're singing lyrics, we're communicating, most usually. But when we start improvising and we're not singing lyrics now, the here's this human voice making an instrument-like sound, 
But if you are you know, your brain's trying to, or the observer's brain's trying to make sense of what you're saying. So I prefer soften up the consonants a little bit and only use them hard when you want to. So by softening them up, it makes them less object, uh, object, objectionable. Um, besides the obvious slap as a percussion, as the main, you know, just a percussion instrument, um, you, it also creates the pulse or the attack of the wave, the bass wave. And um, attack, if you're not familiar with that term, is simply means the very beginning of the sound wave. So a note has that beginning part, the and that is referred to as the attack. And if you saw it on a sound wave, and the wave ran, uh, you know, from be my beginning to end, <laughs> um, the beginning of that sound wave that you were looking at, the visual representation of the sound, the attack's usually larger, and then it goes into a, you know, the tail, and then becomes smaller, and then it tails off. So, boom, would look like, like that. So the, the attack being a pulse takes the place of the consonants that we just discussed. But the beauty part of his bass, I'll say, uh, pattern is that they are simple but very hooky, uh, sticky, depending on what your <laughs> description is for something that stays in your head. Uh, simple but stays in your head and part of the you know effect relies on the listener to kind of you know kind of remember that and carry it through when he as he goes off into uh, doing his lyric and it doesn't rely completely on that, but it's helpful. And so he plants that bass part um, from the very beginning of the song. He'll repeat the bass part at least four times before he goes into his melody line. Okay, so you've got sticky bass and uh, you've got the percussion to accent it, right? And by the way, uh, when you're doing something uh, even with other instruments and you are uh, improvising and it's time for your solo to come up, it can blow some people away if you do a bass solo. And so take advantage of the percussion. Right? It's kind of cool. People don't expect it. And... Uh, in, in any event, <laughs> I, I, uh, I steal that sometimes and uh, you get a, um, a lot of uh, respect from other musicians, probably more than, than uh, non-musicians <laughs> who are listening. It's a neat thing. Anyway, part of the key to making your brain, the listener's brain, believe that there's more than one person singing is that Bobby McFerrin makes a point of always carrying the one of the bass line throughout the song, even if he's doing a lyric. And that is probably, if out of all of the five elements, that element alone is responsible for having the, con the continuous, you know, uh, feel of a bass playing throughout the song, even when he goes to do melody or something like that. Let me show you what I mean. Oh, baby, I'm thinking about your body. Oh, baby, I'm thinking about your face. Oh, baby, I'm thinking about your body. Thinking about your face. Did you catch it? 
Here it is right here. I'll show you. Oh, baby, I'm thinking. That's it right there. Oh, baby, I'm thinking about your body. Oh, baby, I'm thinking about your face. Oh, baby, I'm thinking about your body. Thinking about your face. Oh, baby, I'm thinking about your body. Oh, baby, I'm thinking about your face. Oh, baby, I'm thinking about your body. Thinking about your face. Thinking about your body. Thinking about your face. Anyway, you get carried away. <laughs> um, so the one, Harry's the one, and that's the, uh, like I said, by itself, probably the most important element. Now, uh, the last uh, bit is, or element, is uh, dynamics. Uh, dynamics mean difference between, typically we talk about it meaning volume when we're talking about music. Um, but dynamics can dynamics in themselves mean a difference in energy from a lot to a little, whether that means lighting, dynamic lighting would be soft to bright. Dynamic music is soft to loud. Um, and a non-dynamic, a song that isn't dynamic would be one that's, you know, da 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 where a dynamic song would do ba 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 da da do da do da da ba da ba do and do be ba do da da do wo Maybe that's too dynamic, right? But that's what dynamics are. So what we want for the Bobby McFerrin feel are stable dynamics, relatively stable dynamics between the bass part that you're doing and the melody part. Simply because the human instrument, when we get down to the, our lowest part of our range, and I am at the lowest part of my range when I'm going, you know, do, ba 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 do, That's about it. <laughs> now, what happens when you're down that low? Do is this is as loud as I can get. If you try to get louder, you'll pitch up. Uh, so dynamically, I can't allow my, you know, normally very strong, more dynamic, if you will, uh, you know, a range, uh, the mid range that I sing in traditionally. I can't let that get louder than the bass part or will lose that effect because keep in mind the bass is singing the first note of the melody it's just doing it an octave lower so thinking about your body thinking about your face is half voice for me right because it would normally be thinking about <clears throat> thinking about your body thinking about your face but if you were to do that the, it would end up, it ends up in balance, like I'm sure it just sounded. So it's like, quiet about your body, quiet about your face, and that doesn't work. So by going down to half voice, uh, you accomplish two things. You keep the dynamics in, in line, but you also have more room, you have more breath. It doesn't take as much breath. And you can slip in and out of, you know, falsetto easier, things like... Thinking about your body, thinking about your face. What are you gonna do? We need to find the body, and that you can do the album. Bobby McFerrin spends a lot of time in this range right here. I do find, but you do it the way you do it. We can do it better than you. We can do it better than you. The beauty of improvisation. If you do not fail then you haven't done it right <laughs> but you get the idea so dynamics mic technique really is part of it and while we're on the subject of mic technique for performers 
your sound system is important in polishing up and finishing the Bobby McFerrin technique. It needs some nice reverb. And a little bit of slapback uh, uh, echo as well is helpful. Um, so uh, it, it accomplishes a couple things. It um, kind of fills in the missing little pieces, if you will, with sound, but it also adds a spatial dimension, which is really cool because you want to try to sound as full and as offer as many different feels from your human body, a human instrument, I mean, as you possibly can. And the, uh, that, the reverb actually helps to carry and connect one thing to the next thing in a nice, a pleasing way to the brain, really, is what, is what it does. <laughs> so uh, there we have sort of a shortened version of a breakdown of Bobby McTer McFerrin's feel. Uh, to go over the elements again, rhythm percussion along with the pulse along with the bass sweet and to the point the bass carries on the one whatever he's doing that stays there and last but not least would be a dynamics slash mic technique so work on some of that and uh, fool around with your human instrument and try to get some instrument sounds out of it he does a great uh muted trumpet that i would love to do and i just can't get that sound but his almost has that little tinny sound that comes with a, uh, a metal mute on a, <laughs> a trumpet it's awesome um also check out uh bobby mcferrin doing blackbird uh, blackbird singing in the dead of night check it out on youtube um Maybe one of his best solo performance, you know, solo a cappella performance is great stuff. Anyway, Kathy, I hope this was helpful and uh, we will uh, see you again. I have another video coming out shortly on pedagogy for teaching vocal improvisation to singers. Until then, take care. Cheers. <laughs>